Crossbridge Church. Welcome to Palm Sunday. Let's stand together. And as Jesus loves us and showed his love for us so many years ago on the cross, we celebrate his love. If you were the only person on this earth, he would have died just for you. He couldn't love us anymore. Amen. Let's celebrate this time together. Crossbridge, welcome for you here and for people over the internet. I'm Pastor Luis, one of the pastors here, and I want to say thank you for joining us in this Palm Sunday. We are so glad that we are here, and I'm sure God will speak to us because today is a beautiful day. By the way, um, the prophet Zacharias. He was still under uh, the pressure in Babylon. And God gave him a vision, a prophecy that I want you to read with me today, okay? So you help me out with my English. Let's read it together, Zechariah 9.9. Because that's what we are going to do. We will rejoice. We will be greatly. Amen? Can you read with me? Rejoice greatly daughter Zion 
Shout daughter Jerusalem See your king comes to you Righteous and victorious God. Jesus is different from any king This morning I just preach about The singularity of Jesus Compared with other kings They came in a big horse In power But Jesus came in a little dunk Humble But victorious All these kings They make their king temporarily The kingdom of Jesus is forever Amen Let's pray Thank you Lord Thank you for today the first Sunday when Jesus came into Jerusalem fulfilling this prophecy Jesus is the Messiah the King thank you that this morning we can worship Him we can say praise we can exalt we can rejoice because he, His death on the cross give us freedom and we are rejoicing today because of Him His salvation Bless us. Continue speaking to us as we continue worship you, Lord. Amen. Much for being here today on Palm Sunday. Today you're going to get to experience a wonderful and great event that our worship team and our children are putting on for us. And today is only the beginning of Holy Week. This Wednesday, March the 27th at 5.30 p.m., we're gonna have our churchwide Easter egg hunt for children fifth grade and below here on our church property. This event is for the whole family. We will have food trucks uh, with food available to purchase as well as bounce houses and an egg hunt for the children. This Friday, March the 29th at 7 p.m., we are going to have our Good Friday service. This is an opportunity for you and your family to come and as we remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. Next Sunday, March the 31st at 9.30 and 11 a.m. is the big day. That is Easter Sunday. Our 9.30 service will be in Portuguese and then our 11 a.m. service will be in English. Come back next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday as we celebrate our risen Savior together. One last announcement that we have is Carol and Gustavo are gonna tell us about our volleyball tournament coming up. Bom dia, igreja. Good morning, church. Se preparem para o nosso primeiro torneio de volleyball. This event will take place at the gym on April 6 and 9 a.m. A taxa de inscrição será de 15 dólares e você pode se registrar no site da igreja ou através do QR code. Anyone over 16 years old can play. Don't miss this opportunity to be part of an unforgettable day of sports, community, and fellowship. As you can see, this volleyball tournament is going to be great and so much fun. The deadline to register is this Wednesday, March the 27th. So make sure to get those registrations in and we cannot wait to see you there.
He said, let there be light. Let there be firmament. Let there be separation. And there was. He said, gather together. Cover yourselves. Fill yourselves. Produce. And so it was. And he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. And he blessed them. The power of the word from the throne creates, forms, rescues, renews, and transforms chaos into life. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through the word we were healed and led to a new life. Through the word Jesus taught his disciples, Jesus taught multitudes, Jesus taught in the synagogues. But his last words in the moment of his greatest agony brought much more than teachings. They brought the essence of God, assurance, care, humanity, purpose and certainty. Certainty of who he is through forgiveness. It's who he is and why he came. Today, we will remember his sacrifice and his victory through the words that he said, do this in remembrance of me.
Then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through His Word we were healed and led to a new life. Through the Word, Jesus taught His disciples, Jesus taught multitudes, Jesus taught in the synagogues. But His last words in the moment of His greatest agony brought much more than teachings. He brought the essence of God, assurance, care, humanity, purpose, and certainty. Certainty of who he is through forgiveness. It's who he is and why he came. Today, we will remember this sacrifice and his victory through the words that he said, do this in remembrance of me. echo in my heart I have walked by his side I have seen many miracles I am a miracle 
Out of me, he expelled seven demons alone. Yes, I am Mary Magdalene. He was the only person that truly loved me and the first person that could see me what even I couldn't see myself. And the wounds my cares, uh, so my soul care seemed to be so uncurable. But Jesus reached me and he restored my life. Not only my life was restored, but the lives of everyone who knew him. There were so many happy moments. In Jesus' hours brought a new teaching, and he hours in each situation bringing a new teaching, and it was three intense years. The entrance into Jerusalem was triumphal. He rode upon a donkey, and people were so excited to see him, and they scattered branches along the way for him to pass through. And they shouted with great enthusiasm, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And again, they scattered branches along the way for him to pass by. When Jesus came near the city, 
he cried with pity for it. And he said, Oh, Jerusalem, if you only knew today what it takes to achieve peace. The next day, when Jesus entered uh, the temple, he got very angry. He started knocking down the tables of the money changers, and uh, he was very upset. And he said, they turned my house of prayers into a den of thieves. And after that, Jesus spent the day teaching in the temple. And in the evening, he went out to spend the night on the Mount of Olives. More and more people started to follow Jesus. And until they knew that Jesus, that he loved us first. And that's when the religious leaders, they started looking for a way to kill him. Finally, the day of the unleavened bread arrived. Then Jesus sent Peter and John to prepare the place for the Passover meal. Could you love me when I fail you? Still think of me. How could you love me? How could you love me? And did I?
Jesus gathered with his disciples for supper, but no one knew this would be the last supper in the presence of the master. Passover supper. Not only my but you are my disciples. As you entered this place today, you received a cup. We're going to share together as a family in purpose and in meaning. So as these disciples share in the meal, I invite all of us to share in the meal together. This bread, God for it. As often as you do this, do it of me. is the cup of the new covenant. A promise that the Father has made to each and every one who would believe by faith. This is the After supper, Jesus directs his disciples, telling them everything that would happen, his death, his resurrection, and where he would find them. Jesus agonized as he faced the reality of going to the cross, but he chose to do God's will. They sang a hymn and read Psalm 121. I will lift my eyes unto the mountains. From where shall my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. He made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade in your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day or the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil, nor or he will also keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming forth. In this time, from now and forever more. And Jesus left with his disciples.
over the suffering to come. And as he carried the weight of all the sins of men, Jesus agonized to the point of sweating blood. With the process fixed by the force of the religious leaders, Pilate conceded. Then he ordered the scourging and flogging of Jesus. After the flogging and the scourging, the crowning with thorns, Jesus is brought before Pilate and the crowd. The same crowd that had revered him with so much joy fiercely cries out, crucify him. Imagine as an exhausted and badly beaten Jesus walking through the streets, barefoot over the stones and gravel, often falling to his knees under the weight of the beam of the cross that he was carrying on his way to the crucifixion. As Jesus is lying on his back, the executioners take a long nail and put it on Jesus' wrist with sharp blows and plant it and beat it into the wood. Jesus is then raised up between the two condemned thieves. Oh Mary, can you believe what they've done to our Jesus? I never thought I would see such cruelty. Besides me, Mary, his mother, and John, and all the followers mingle in the crowd. And it was at that moment of terror that I heard Jesus' declaration of love from the cross. The soldiers and religious leaders, they mocked him, they challenged him, but I heard him saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Out of the condemned, one on each side of Jesus, one of them recognized him and asked him to remember. And then he said, Today you will be with me in paradise. In the midst of so much pain, Jesus worries about his mother. And he look at her and he's enjoying. He say, she say, he says, sorry, there is your son. As time went on, his breathing becoming more shallow and labor. And at noon, he say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus is surrounded by asphyxia. He strives to take small breaths, raising himself to relieve the pressure. Then he said, I'm thirsty. At that moment, he showed his humanity and the executioner their cruelty. Shortly afterwards, the sky darkens, the sun hides, and suddenly the temperature drops. And soon it will be 3 p.m. And after torture that seemed to last for hours and hours, all his pain, all his thirsty, and all the shame he's born, Jesus said, it is finished. And at last, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He died for my sins. He died for your sins. And he died for the sin of the world.
For three days, nothing really happened. We are all hiding, and the silence only broke at dawn. Me and other women went to embalm the body of Jesus. And I was worried about who would roll the stone away from the grave. But when we arrived there, the stone was already rolled away, and his body was not there. We run to tell the disciples who did you not believe us. Then Peter and John run to the tomb and saw it with their own eyes. Then they returned home, but I was still wondering where they put his body. And suddenly, I heard a voice saying, Woman, why are you crying? 
who are you looking for? And he said, I, I heard a voice, and I thought he was the gardener. Uh, and he said, Mary. And I recognized the sweet voice of Jesus, the voice I heard so many times. And with such a joy, I screamed, Master! Master! Yes, it was Him. It was Him. He was resurrected. He was alive. And He spoke to me. I remember His words. And at that moment, I remember all the teachings, and I understood everything, everything. His kingdom is not here. He is alive. Hallelujah. He lives. He is risen. He is risen.
After the resurrection, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mount that Jesus had pointed out to them. Jesus continued to teach, and his last words between us were, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you, and I will be with you always, even unto the end of earth. Let's all stand up on our feet, raise a hand into the sky, and let the whole world hear your praise for the Lord. Yeah. 
as we think about the reality of what you've seen, of what you've heard. You're not just a participant, I want you to know that, just watching some performance. You are actually part, as it were, of the show. I, I, I don't know everything that you came into this room with today. And this story, and the way it was told today, and the way it's been told over and over again, this story has been told so many different times. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus accomplished what we witnessed here this morning. What is the relevance to you and to me when you think about it? Does it have any connection? You know, in this very room yesterday, we had a memorial service for a young man, 28 years old, whose life ended. And most of us in this room, we'd say, wow, that's so young. So young. Where is a God in a place like that? As I looked into the eyes of the family and the friends, the brokenness, the hurt, the questions, if this world was all that there is, then that would be the most desperate situation I've ever seen in my life. But you see, today you've heard a new story. You've heard a new song. Because one of the key phrases that was made in this whole presentation is, His kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is far greater than this world. This world has been corrupted by sin. The Bible tells us that one out of every one dies. Sin earns death. And all of us are sinners. I'm not here to beat you over the head with that. Life is hard enough. You know your mistakes. You know the things you've done wrong, the things you've said that you shouldn't have said, the actions that you've undertaken you know you shouldn't have done. Many of you come from broken homes. Maybe you feel abandoned even right now. You wonder if there is any purpose at all in life, but I'm here to tell you that man on the cross makes everything purposeful. He becomes the very center of life if you will by faith embrace him. As tragic as life is, so was the tragedy of the cross. But as you saw, the tragedy of the cross is followed by the power of resurrection. Satan thinks he wins because of death. When a young man who's 28 years old, his life is, is so taken so quickly. Satan thinks he wins, but he didn't reckon for resurrection. In this very room, if you are here today and you know Jesus as your Savior, if you have by faith put your trust in Him, you know what I'm talking about. The Bible's clear. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Life is not easy. And if you think that coming to Jesus will make your life easy, you're going to be on easy street, everything's going to be wonderful and roses, that is mistaken. But we don't live for this world. We serve a far greater God who has a kingdom beyond this world. A God who will redeem this world one day when that Jesus who died on a cross, who rose from the grave, who ascended into heaven, will one day return and put his feet on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. Are you a child of God? Will you be a part of that great moment when our Jesus returns? If you're in this room today and you've never given your heart to Jesus, you're just trying to make it through life, go to work, pay the bills, raise your kids. I get it. But you know deep down inside of you, something is longing, something is crying for more. For more. And you're chasing that more with so many different things. You think if you just have enough money, that'll be the more you need. 
to bring peace into your life. You think if you just meet Mr. Right or Mrs. Right, that will be the more that will satisfy you. You think that if you achieve some objective, some position, that'll get you there. Or maybe you're just sitting here today, you say, life has no meaning, I'm just gonna party and live anyway because I'm going back to the dirt. But search your heart. Deep down, you know all of those things are wrong. Because Satan tempted Eve that there's more than just God. And when Adam and Eve sinned, they plunged the rest of us into sin. And we've been chasing that proverbial more every day of our life. But those who come into a relationship with Jesus recognize and know that he is more. He's not only more, he is enough. We don't need any more than Jesus. When we get right our relationship with him, then everything else starts making sense. Well, what an amazing presentation. If your heart has not been opened, if your eyes have not seen, I'm begging you before you leave, Give Jesus your heart. In front of you, in the pew, in your seat, there is a little card like this. It says decision card on it, right in front of where the envelopes would be in your your seat. And there should be a writing utensil or something around that. I'm going to ask you in just a moment to take one of these cards if you want to know Jesus as your Savior. Right now, if you would, every head bowed in this place and every eye closed. No one looking around. Please be respectful of those around you. I want to ask you a serious question this morning. No one's looking. Only me. I'm asking you so as a pastor, I know how to pray for you. Are you confident beyond a shadow of a doubt that were you to take your last breath on earth today, you would wake up and spend eternity with Jesus forever if you are confident of that would you just raise your hand right now raise your hand if you know Jesus is your Savior Jesus lives in your heart he is your master and Lord and you would spend eternity with him lots of hands everywhere you can put them down now those of you in this room that maybe weren't able to raise your hand everyone is not no one's looking every head is bowed If you want to be certain, but you're not certain right now, if you would like to know for sure that Jesus is your Savior and Lord, and if you were to leave this earth, you'd spend eternity with Him in heaven, would you just slip up your hand right now? You're not sure. You want to know. Anybody in the room? For those of you that are not sure, I told you to take that card. Now let me lead you through a prayer. There's nothing magical about my prayer or anything special about it. It's a biblical thing. The Bible tells us that if we confess Jesus as Lord, that means recognize He is in control. Not us. We confess that. We surrender it. Then if we believe in our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, we shall be saved. That's it. This isn't church uh, membership. It's not joining some religion. It's connecting in relationship to the God who loves you enough to die for you and empower you with his resurrection. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you want to know Jesus as your Savior, if you want to be certain that were you to leave the earth today, you'd spend eternity with Him in heaven, I want you to pray that prayer, something like that. Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I recognize I need a Savior. I confess you as Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe in my heart 
that you were raised from the dead by God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, everyone, look back up at me. If you just prayed that prayer, will you do us a favor? Take that card, as I said, fill out that information. Just give us your name and a way to contact you, and then check the box that says, Today, I receive Jesus as my Savior. Even if you didn't raise your hand, nothing magical about that either. Just do it, and then leave it right there on your pew as you exit today. Leave it right there, sitting where you are. Someone will later come along and collect that, and I'll reach out back out to you, or one of our staff team will reach back out to you this week based on that decision that you made. I want to thank you for being a part of this today. And I pray that the Lord has touched you in some special way. I want to thank Pastor Nay and Miss Marcia for making this happen. I want to thank our instrumentalists and all our singers that made this happen. I want to thank our children, even though they took off for a minute. They'll, parents, you can pick them back up, but let's give them a round of applause. And I'd like to ask, where are you, Miss Marcia? There you are over there. Will you come here for just a minute? My, uh, my lovely bride has something she wants to give you. Yes, it's important. Thank you for reminding me of that. Did you know that every single line of this production was written by Marcia? God is so good. Isn't Crossbridge an awesome church? I'm so excited to be a part of it. I want to... um, We're going to close in just a minute, but I I want to say just a couple more things and I'll dismiss you. If God lays it on your heart, as you exit the building today, there's going to be ushers at each door. If you'd like to give to the ministry of Crossbridge Church, God is using our church not only here locally, but he's using it around the world to start churches, to share the gospel, to, to, to do exactly what that last song showed us. We're not going to stop until the whole world hears. And so all your support will go to benefit and help the ministry of Crossbridge grow. I encourage you, if you would be so moved by God to do it, to give as you exit the building. Thank you again for being here today. Thank you, team. Thank you, everyone, for making this a possibility. And I'd like to ask Brother Bob if you would to close us in prayer, please. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for today's presentation, Lord, that through song and video and music, hopefully hearts are touched by what they saw today. If they don't know you as personal Lord and Savior, I just pray that they come to that knowledge and saving faith in Jesus. Lord, today today is Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Holy Week. And five days from today, 2,000 years ago, Jesus sacrificed his life to pay our sin debt. We just thank you for Jesus. We just ask the Lord that the that you move in a mighty way in hearts for those that witness what happened today, Lord, and and may the Holy Spirit touch their hearts. Friday that's coming up is crucifixion day, but more importantly, three days later is Resurrection Sunday, which is the linchpin of the Christian faith. Without Jesus raising from the dead, none of us have any hope. Lord, we just thank you for all that you do in this ministry, in this church, and may we take what we hear today and take it 
beyond these walls and proclaim the powerful name of Jesus. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Before you leave, if you have the palm in your hand, we're going to reprise that song that Lori sang with us, right? Celebrate the King. Okay? So have a great week. May God bless you. Okay? Have a good Palm Sunday. Okay? Celebrate the King. Got it? Are you ready, guys? So let's, let, let's all stand. Yeah. Good, Pastor. I like this. Okay? Celebrate the king. So we are waiting for the lyric. Okay. Yes. Come now rise is how this song begins. So let's sing together. Amen.